After e4, c5, knight f3, and knight c6, block playing the classical Sicilian, we play uh, bishop e5, Rosolino, and now let's look at this move, queen c7. We have seen something like this in the past, but we're going to go through some novelties, stuff we haven't seen. As we remember, we have the castle now. So now we're going to go through this move. This is the novelty, e5. We haven't seen something like this before, and it's important because it's a pretty popular system, and we need to learn what to do with it. However, before we go through that, let's see something... From the previous lines, after a6, we know we have to take the knight, that's the whole point. Queen takes back, the queen went to c7 to keep the integrity of the pawn structure. And now rook to e1, and after e6, d4, pawn takes, and now c3. We know this, how, you know that this is the best move, it's not a gambit. And after knight takes, you know, remember all the, the, the things you're threatening right now. Go watch the other videos so that you understand it properly. Now I'm going a bit fast. But you need to watch the other videos before you watch this one. Uh, pawn takes knight c3. Remember all the threats we're making with knight d5 and so on. Now here in the past, we went through like bishop d6, bishop e7, stuff like that. In this video, we're going to go through two novelties. d6 or bishop to b4, immediately pinning the knight. This move seemed to be making sense. D6, for example, doesn't uh, doesn't stop our amazing move, knight to d5. Obviously, if the pawn takes, then pawn takes back, discover check, the pawn comes with an attack on the queen, it's game over. So after knight f6, attacking the queen, you attack the uh, attacking the knight, you now attack the queen with knight to d4. The, the queen will have to move. The queen also has to be careful not to lose track of the square c7, because you want to play knight c7, winning a free rook. So queen to c5, and now knight to b3, attacking the queen. Queen back to c6 and now knight to a5. That's the journey to, to attack that queen. If the queen goes back to, to c5 once again, b4 wins the game. There's literally nowhere to go for the queen with, uh, and avoid, you know, the knight to c7 check if the queen goes to b5. So you're winning loads of material. If instead of queen c5, black with queen to d7 and says, you know what, I'll give you the exchange. Well, knight to b6 can happen now. But black says, I'll go back to c7. When you take the rook, I'll take your knight, and then this knight that we have in a8 is, well, let me show you, knight takes, and now queen takes, and now it looks like our knight is trapped, and black is giving away two rooks, I mean, one rook for two knights, which is actually a very good price to pay, besides black also still has the bishop pair. However, don't be, don't panic, bishop d2 comes now, attacking the queen, and after the queen goes to d8, Keeping an eye on the squares where the knight was going to try and, uh, and save itself from. Rook to c1. And that's it. That knight is safe. Bishop to d7 with an attack on the knight. Just play check. So bishop d7 doesn't work. Nothing else would have worked. You were going to play knight c7 anyway. And when the king moves, bishop to a5 ends the game. As you can tell, you've got loads of um, unstoppable threats to win the opponent queen. And it's not like this could have been avoided. Like here... Instead of bishop d7, what if, I don't know, bishop to e7? You can still do the check, and uh, and then you can still play bishop to this square. It looks like the knight is still trapped, but you can still you can protect the knight. Let's make an example. Knight check, king moves, and now bishop a5. Threatening to make a check and take the queen. If the king keeps going to avoid check, checks and so on, you play knight to d5. And the queen cannot take the bishop now, because then the queen will be abandoning this uh, this, dia uh, this this file, and then that's going to be it. Rook check, and it's going to be mate soon. So back in this position, earlier we went through d6 straight away. We noticed that it doesn't stop our amazing knight d5 move. What about bishop b4? Pinning the knight, considering how strong this knight is, and says, you know what, if you, you know what, if you move, I'll just take the rook. And that's it. You don't have any of that. Fine, we have to give up on that, but we have a new a new plan now, which is even better. Queen to d4. So now you know that bishop b4 doesn't help. Because the bishop is playing the knight, but now you're threatening queen g7, trapping the rook and winning material anyway. Bishop is forced to take because we're attacking the bishop. It's a fork, we're attacking g7 as well. And now we take back with the pawn. We have no interest, no interest in swapping, considering that strong plays don't swap pieces. Knight f6, to make an example now, is immediately punished with bishop a3. Our opponent cannot castle, cannot play d6, and he's left with the stupid bishop in c8. That bishop is so useless. So let's not go through that. A move like f6 to stop the queen from infiltrating is met with e5. And this is a beautiful move. Because we're going to open the files, 
and this king is never gonna castle as you can tell b5 by black to develop the bishop on the fianchette and put pressure on this on this diagonal bishop to a3 and after bishop to develop uh, develop to b7 queen to b uh, before threatening to reach f8 and this is uh, already unstoppable that there's no moves now here that can stop the whole thing d6 get taken d5 you can take on passan and you can take it from there best move according to the engine and obvious move will be castling long because uh yeah that kind of saves everything but black is not in time to play a normal game because you're going to play c4 and and then put the rooks on the same file of the opponent king now here even if you play the absolute best moves in this position nothing really helps you can't really take this pawn that's ridiculous because then you can just take it um pawn takes yeah we can't take back because then black will checkmate us so you're just gonna take this one so if black doesn't take your pawn you're gonna take them there's no no way out here taking with the pawn is a suicide because rook pays the queen taking with the queen means queen to d6 threatening to just check and the queen is cutting off any movement of the black player king restraining his freedom as if he was a married man back from the start we're gonna look at the main uh line of the day so queen c7 castle what happens after e5 we haven't seen this at all so we go on with rook e1 but what you need to understand is that black's position is actually really stupid already these two pawns here create this, the d backward pawn and there's you know there's nothing nothing good happening from this position uh, for black it's really really bad let's make an example if black develops let's say knight f6 you play c3 and nothing stops you from playing d4 and when the open when the files are open then you can uh, take reference from the previous videos to see how to take that how to play it's very easy uh, bishop e7 d4 that was unstoppable take take now here black could take the pawn or maybe defend it with, well defend it with d6 doesn't work because you will simply play d5 right the knight is pinned so you're gonna win material the only move for black now here seems to be a6 obviously if you take the knight they take your bishop but black's lack of development is important to notice because now queen a4 is the best move if if they take a bishop you go up the exchange if they move the rook to save the rook and now you're under threat of being taken you're just gonna play bishop back to f1 and this knight is still pinned and he can't move and you're winning material and by the way a move like b5 doesn't work because this knight you, you can just play queen c2 right and this knight is still pinned he can't move otherwise free queen so back in this position right black plays the queen c7 variation and we castle so we're looking at the variation with e5 and as we know we play rook e1 and we're looking at knight f6 c3 bishop develops and now d4 take take we mentioned how d6 to defend that pawn doesn't work because of the whole d5 thing what about well castling is just wrong because you will still play d5 and now that knight has got nowhere to go except well he's gonna have to go to b8 or d8 but then it, it becomes stupid to look at these positions knight to d4 appears to be the only move that stops the influence of our queen on this file and after take take you play knight you don't even recapture this pawn you play knight to d2 that pawn is lost anyway cannot be defended now if you think that knight uh, bishop c5 helps you're just gonna play knight b3 d6 to protect the bishop and create a pawn chain fine you just play bishop g5 and now the knight will you know you're threatening to just take here and uh, and break the pawn structure in front of the king the knight will have to move let's say knight d7 with the idea of going to e5 you play rook to c1 finalizing the pressure on this bishop although it looks like he's well protected knight e5 allows the development of bishop to g4 for example but it doesn't matter you're just gonna take take and now the best move is to finally recapture this pawn and uh, you've actually got great advantage out of this uh, when the pawn takes obviously you're taking the queen got the bishop pair up material completely winning end game so back in this position we mentioned that castling doesn't work and d6 doesn't work because of the constant threat of pawn to d5 exploiting the uh, the higher amount of space of the for the white player what if black just takes the pawn and says you know what get out of here i don't want to see you anymore well fine but now we have another pawn push <laughs> e5 and now that knight will have to go to an uncomfortable square remember that knight g4 doesn't put triple attack on this pawn simply because you can take this knight and when you kick this knight away 
The knight will force, be forced to go to h6. You can then take, you can take this pawn uh, also with the knight. It's a much better position. So let's not look at that. Let's look at this move, knight d5. But either way, white is so much better after queen d3. It's impossible to defend this knight, so the knight will have to move. The tactic move will be knight to b6. You know, knight b4, you can just kick it away. There's no point. And now, very quietly, bishop to g5 develops and also stops black from castling. If this stops the black player from castling, this move. Because if black does castle, you take the bishop. Only way to take back is with the knight. And I play queen a3 and we're threatening the knight. Obviously, you can't play d6 because it's attacked multiple times. You're going to play knight back to c6. Fine, knight d2 now. And when the the bishop is attacked, let's look at this scenario. The knight's protecting the rook. So this bishop is actually being attacked. We don't take here because otherwise we're helping the development of the opponent. We play bishop to d3. And look, the advantage is not great. It's like plus two. But now that the dark square bishop has been eliminated, we have a strong attack on the uh, you know bishop uh, h7, knight g5, queen to h3 check. This, this is going to be unstoppable ideas. And uh, the funny thing is that black has got a double isolated pawn as well. So even if he trades the pieces and goes to an endgame, that's really bad. So in this position, instead of castling, what if black takes the knight? Okay, knight takes back. Now we're threatening f7. So after castling, queen to d3 threatens checkmate. Only way to stop it would be g6. And now, this is important. It's a very good pattern because here, I mean from b3, if you go straight to h3... This move kind of solves the problem already for, for our opponent, because the knight will have to move. And uh, here instead, if you go to d3 and threatens this checkman, they have to play g6. Obviously, h6 doesn't work here, because you still mate. g6, now you can play queen h3. And now h6 cannot happen. That's beautiful. So here, black will have to stop it with h5. And now queen to g3. And white is just better. There is no way to take an advantage here for, for, for black. Let's say a6 attacking the bishop. You will just play bishop to d3. With a very simple threat. Knight takes f7. <laughs> and then you got an attack on g6. The queen position is already evaluated plus 4 here. Um, so let's go back a second. Instead of a6. Here, what I mean, the best move according to the engine is knight takes. This is obviously because we are, if you take back with the queen... Then queen takes back, rook takes back, and f6 is a fork attacking the rook and the knight. So black will recapture the piece. So that's why the best thing to do is rook uh, takes. Because when f6 comes, you can do this move, knight f3. And now it looks like our opponent might, well, okay, can't recapture the queen with the, uh, can't recapture the rook with the queen because knight will take. But if they recapture with the pawn, then queen is going to g6 and checkmate is coming very soon. So back in this position, after taking the pawn in e5 with the rook, the best move according to the engine, obviously, the whole point was this one. Queen c1 check. Only way to block is bishop to f1. And now our opponent's got access to the square b2, trapping our rook. But we're going to play knight e4, threatening knight f6. The pawn in f cannot push because of queen takes. And white is completely winning. Once again, position value to uh, plus 4. So let's go back a second here. What was the only move that our opponent could have played here? It's d6. Coming with an attack on the rook. Rook e2 now. Defending b2. Preventing uh, from losing the rook and losing the game as well. d3. And now we risk getting a little bit overwhelmed. Rook d2 here will run into knight c4. It's horrible. So we have to play queen e3. Forcing a swap of queens. And we'll take it from that. We're completely winning. So one last thing before closing this video. In this position, after playing rook e1, we went through knight f6. Uh, what about d6 right now? It's the most passive variation and it's, uh, you know, it has to be quickly mentioned. You just play the usual thing, c3, and then you're going to play d4. What if black then be, is able to play bishop g4? We haven't looked at this setup. That's why d6 is important to see because now the knight is pinned. We can't really push d4. However, we are going to push d4. So when the bishop takes and the queen takes back, pawn takes... Pawn takes, pawn takes, we're down a pawn, but we are get much, much better position. Bishop f4, black's got a double isolated pawn after all. Bishop f4, a move like knight f6 here is immediately punished with e5. If pawn takes, you got bishop takes with an attack on the queen, discover checks completely, game over. 
If instead of that move, black plays bishop e7, same thing, e5. Because, I mean, if the pawn doesn't take, you're taking this one. It's a fork. If the pawn does take, you take, you come with an attack on g7, and you're winning material. Let's see, for example, here, you got also, it's a fork, right? You're attacking g7 as well. So here, so here, it appears this none, none of these moves works. What about f6? That kind of does stop everything. Now we have to play knight a3. And after knight to h6, developing. Okay, just take. 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 And now knight to c2 closes the game. Once we get into this square with the knight, we're completely winning. A move like c3 is really stupid. Because you are able to play e5 with an attack on this rook, discover attack on this rook, and threatens to simply take any of these pawns, and then uh, the rook will be on an open file, and it's, it's going to be checkmate very soon. Let's make a brief mention of this other line I encountered, and might, we might make a video about this, about you know something similar in the future. But let's see, bishop c7 here, and as we know, we castle in the variation with e5, rook to e1. Let's look at this move, knight to e7. Very boring move. It stops the development of this bishop, but it's kind of it's kind of very safe. And black might take back the knight if we take. Yeah, it's very solid, but it's not good. Here we play bishop to c4. That's where the bishop is best placed. And this is now a e4 e5 game. And you're also threatening knight g5. Very very simple plan. Going to f7, and because of the development of the, the, the lack of development of the black pieces, you can literally afford to do this move, knight g5 and then carry on. So black is in a bad position. If the knight attacks the bishop straight away, which would be one of the best ideas, we don't have this sacrifice now, we're going to have to play bishop to f1. However, black's position is completely stupid. So let's look at this move, d6, creating this annoying uh, pyramid, and how do we dismantle it? Okay, c3. You're just going to play c3 and d4. That's it. Knight to g6, allowing development of the bishop, potentially jumping into f4. d4. Okay. And obviously, take, take, take just favors white because we have a rook on an open file and our opponent is not castled yet. So after bishop e7, one of those positions where the Sicilian player doesn't take in d4, what to do? Okay, fine. b4. And that's it. This cannot be stopped, because now, okay, black's position is going to be worse no matter what. If he goes back to c6, you just attack it again. And when he goes back to d8, you play knight to a3. And this cannot be stopped, like, you know, you have both jumps in c4 and b5 available. If black plays a6, you just take this pawn. And when the pawn takes back knight c4... Black doesn't make it in time to play b5 because you can play d6 with an attack on the queen. If the bishop goes in between, you play a4 just to stop b5. Bishop g4 by black now, pinning the knight, reducing the influence over this square. You play a5. Black cannot move this knight anywhere. Cannot move this knight anywhere that makes sense because, you know, f4 isn't a safe square. Because if you do take, then you can push this pawn and black is in huge trouble. What if black just castles and pretends like nothing's happening? Queen to d3, I'm pinning the knight. Position evaluated plus 3. Back in this position, you might ask, you know, when we took the pawn in c5, what if the black player doesn't take with the pawn and just takes with the queen? Seems like it makes sense. You're going to play knight c4 anyway. The idea is to play bishop e3. So b5, attacking the knight. Okay, bishop e3 comes with an attack on the queen. And then the queen will have to move. But then you can jump to b6 with the knight. And it's weird because now black can play... Rook to b8, double attack on the knight, meaning that you're forced to take this bishop. And when the rook takes back, there's going to be lo a lot of attack over this weak pawn. What are we going to do now? c4. That just does the job. Got double attack on the pawn in b5. So after the pawn takes, you're going to play queen check. If the king moves from the check, you got rook a to b1. Position ev evaluated over plus 4. You're threatening bishop b6, deadly move. If instead the queen blocks the check here, so after the queen a4 check, the black player goes from c7 to d7 to block the check. Again, position is completely winning after take, take, only way to take back is with the king. And now simply g3, the idea of playing bishop to h3. And good luck to black stopping this. 
And back in this position, we went through all, all, all the plan we have when the knight retreats to b6. What if instead black takes the pawn? Fine, take back, and now the knight will have to go back to c6. Uh, obviously, c4 doesn't work, because queen to c2 wins a piece. You got double attack on the knight. If this gets protected, let's say, with b5, well, then a4. Removing the pawn from there, and then winning the piece. If, okay, a6 is not possible because you can just take, uh, the pawn in a6 is pinned, you'll be winning the rook. So bishop a6 is necessary now, but like, you know, this is also a bad move. Because simply, uh, take, take, and now the, the knight is still pinned, you're going to be able to just play knight to c3 attacking the bishop. This bishop cannot be defended, he will have to move. And when the bishop does move, you don't even bother taking the bishop here, the best move is knight to d5. Because they take the bishop afterwards. If instead the bishop goes to c6, looks like it, you know, well, obviously now you can take the knight. And if instead the bishop had gone to d7, again, knight to d5, double attack on this on this piece once again, attack on the queen, and that's going to be it. Needless to say, in this position, after the pawn just takes back, if the knight doesn't go to c4, but rather c6, looks safer, but you will just play d5. And that's, you know, obviously the, the knight can't take this pawn because queen a4 wins the knight.